If you're in Seattle, like most of our viewers are, then you probably know the Seattle Times just reported real estate market is hot and prices are actually up 10.5% year after year. That's gotta be a good thing, right? It's really good news, I mean. Finally, yeah, finally. finally. You know, but just now, this is the first time this has happened since 2007, which was five years ago. That's a long time. Interesting, well that poses the question, Ben. Are we, or is there potential for another housing bubble here in Seattle? I don't think so, but here's why. My name's Ben Brashen. I'm Ryan Leopold, and welcome back to Mortgage Resource TV. With housing prices finally on the rise in Seattle, which again is a good thing, it's weird that we'd even broach the subject of a possible housing bubble. Well, but when prices start going up, you have to think yep. about why they're going up this time versus last time. And last time, well, it really started with the mortgage industry. I mean, you had crazy loans going on. You could do stated income, 0% down, investment property with 5 to 10% down, negative M loans, interest only, the list goes on and on and on. In fact, you could actually get an investment property with interest only, zero down, and maybe a negative amortizing loan without proving your income or your assets. And it's pretty a, silly. It's a big shock that we had an increase in values over that period of time, huh? Right, so let's take a look at a quick chart that'll show you the increase in prices vert next to the loan programs that were available. So as you can see from this chart, as the unique and different loan programs hit the market, our median home price in this country skyrocketed, which created this housing boom. The minute we had a mortgage crisis and those programs were eliminated, you can see that the home prices, the median home price in this country declined as we had a return to normalcy. What's the difference now? Well, it has a lot to do with us, the mortgage lenders, because the guidelines aren't the same as they used to be. Like, you actually have to prove you're worthy of borrowing money. Yeah, so like we noticed in the chart, we have now a return to normalcy. So we went from the loosest underwriting guidelines we've ever seen to really the tightest guidelines we have ever seen in the industry. But at the end of the day, they actually make sense. You have to support your income, you have to show you have good credit, and you have to have money as a down payment. It just makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. In fact, we're excited for it because now if prices mm -hmm. go up, they'll be supported by the fundamentals of people being able to afford those houses based on credit, income, and assets. But when you start seeing the headlines, especially in the front page of the Seattle Times, mm -hmm. then it starts to bring back a lot of confidence in the housing market. I mean, in confidence, kind of as a snowball effect, right? More buyers come in, mm -hmm. more sellers are comfortable, they might get what they want for their house. Yeah. And you couple that with low interest rates and shrinking unemployment, that leads to great fundamentals for any housing market. That's right, and that's why we don't think there's going to be a real estate bubble anytime soon. Thanks so much for watching. And we'll catch you next time on Mortgage Resource TV. Five percent year over year in the city of that's Seattle. That's gotta be a good thing, right? Well, it's a really good thing. I mean, Finally. We haven't seen that type of action. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> I'm trying to get into it. Camera ready. Gladiator ready. Cool. Remember that? Yes. Like, don't do this while I'm talking. All right. <laughs> like, sitting yeah. there waiting for your I don't line. know what the hell is this. <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy. I sit here and go like, blah. Ready? You have to look through the camera and be in people's living rooms. Yeah. You wouldn't do that in people's living rooms.